Hello guys and welcome back. So today we'll be once again talking about the NHL and we'll do yet another NHL playing round series preview. Today it will be Vancouver Canucks and Minnesota Wild facing each other in the Western Conference um, Western Conference matchup. Uh, it will be the pass uh, team from the Pacific Division uh, against the team from the Central Division. Before I start discussing this series, I just want to quickly mention that Seattle has released their name or has revealed, they have also revealed their jerseys and their secondary logo as well as a word mark. So really, if you haven't seen it, which I'm sure you already have, but if in case if you haven't, definitely go and check out their site and uh, also tell me down in the comment section below if you do like the Seattle's new logo and the, the name Seattle Kraken or not. I, I'm totally fine with that and I think that the logo is pretty nice as well. So that's just the start. So Seattle finally really revealed their name and right now let's jump right into the series. So Vin, uh, Vancouver finished 7th in the Western Conference, Minnesota 10th. However, between these two teams was only one point difference and both of these teams have played 69 games so it's really really tight between these two teams and really I would say there is no big favor a big uh, big yeah favorite here. I think the teams are pretty evenly matched so it, it should be very interesting series to watch definitely. So Vancouver finished with 78 points, Minnesota with 77. They have played against each other uh, this year, so 2020, already three games. So the first was played on the 12th of uh, January and Minnesota lost uh, in that game 1-4. to four. So that was the first victory for Vancouver. Then the other game between these two teams was played on the 7th of February and Minnesota won this time 4-2. And the last game was played on the 20th of February and Minnesota won 4-3 after shootout. So even here you can see that it's very evenly matched. One win for Minnesota, one win for, for Vancouver in the uh, in the regulation and then shoot out a victory for Minnesota here. Um, when we want to look at Minnesota and their style of play and how they have been playing, they have been playing really well in the, especially in the second part of the season, especially in the end, in the ending parts of the season. But um, they, if there wasn't any coronavirus pause, if the coronavirus hadn't arrived, which I'm, I'm sure we all would have. Uh, really, we would be very happy about it when that would happen, but unfortunately the coronavirus is here and that really stopped the, Minnesos the Minato uh, Minnesota's momentum. They had momentum, they were playing really, really well, but then came coronavirus and their momentum is, um, is over. So that's definitely, I think that this coronavirus pause is a big disadvantage for Minnesota. I think Minnesota, along with maybe New York Rangers, is one of those teams that really was hurt by this coronavirus pause as long as they have been playing really well in this uh, ending part of the season. So let's move to the Vancouver side of the board. Uh, here we have the top three strikers, the top three scorers of Vancouver Canucks. Number one, very surprising name, JT Miller. I'm sure not uh, a lot of fans expected him to be the leader of the team, but he really was a career year for JT Miller after a move from Tampa Bay Lightning to Western Conference to Vancouver this season in 69 games, 72 points, 27 goals, 45 assists. Uh, absolutely brilliant year for JT Miller, kudos to him and I'm sure the tra Travis Green is very happy with his style of play. Number two, Elias Patterson. this was expected, Elias Patterson. we know how big talent he is, 66 points this season, 27 goals, so exactly the same as JT Miller and 39 assists. And number three, there were two guys on the spot, number three with 53 points, uh, Bo Horvath, the captain and the very young fellow Quinn Hughes, but I went with the player who had more goals and that was Bo Horvat. He had scored 22 goals and added 31 assists. So that are, these are the top three guys of Vancouver according to scoring. It's Miller, it's Patterson, it's Horvat. But of course, um, Quinn Hughes was playing really well as well. Goalies, when we look at goalies, the top 
Goalie, according to save percentage this season, was Jacob Markström with 91.8% save percentage. Jacob Markström, the Swedish guy, was really playing very, very well this season. And I think he might be the MVP of Vancouver for this season. And thanks to him, Vancouver was able to stay uh, in a lot of games, to stay in a conversation of winning. They were able to win many games thanks to Jacob Markstrom and his style of play and his fantastic acrobatic saves. So kudos to Jake Markstrom and I think he did a brilliant job this season. Number second is... Uh, Demko, Thatcher Demko with 90.5 save percentage and number 3 goes to Luis Domingue, another acquisition from Tampa Bay Lightning, 88.2% save percentage. So I believe a starter for, for Vancouver is, on the contrast with Minnesota, pretty much there, I do believe it would be Jacob Markstrom, uh, who would be or who would start in net for Vancouver and they will need to get best out of him in order to move and to beat Minnesota. Okay, time on ice leaders. To no one's surprise, it's Adler, the very, uh, very, uh, very, very, <laughs> very good defenseman, very, I don't want to say very old, but yeah, he's all, one of these older guys, very experienced, that was the word that I was looking for, and he's played 22.37, minutes per game and then Quinn Hughes of course he was terribly important for Vancouver especially on the power plays Quinn Hughes and his style of play his creativity and his shots his um yeah basically Quinn Hughes did everything right in his rookie year and that's why he's in that nomination along with Dominic Kubelik and Kale McCarr to win uh to win basically the uh the Calder trophy for the best rookie uh, this season. So Quinn Hughes, he had a very good season, which is also proven by the amount of minutes he was spending each night on the ice. Power play. When we look at special teams, power play for Vancouver, very good, very good clicking at 24.1%. It was the fourth best in the league, so really Vancouver's power play could be very, very, uh, very critical and very effective. And uh, big thanks goes to Quinn Hughes who is on the blue land, ex um, very, very good, very productive. Uh, penalty kill, good as well, 80.5%, 16th in the league. So overall, special teams, quite good for Vancouver, to be honest with you. Goals for Vancouver has scored this season 224 goals, which is kind of a lot. Goals against, 214 goal differential of plus 10. So, good numbers for Vancouver overall. When we look at Minnesota, Minnesota and their top three scorers this season, Kevin Fiala, the acquisition from Nashville Predators, which was involved in a deal for Mikael Granlund. So, Fiala, 54 points, 23 goals, 31 assists, a very good season for him, especially in the ending parts. I do believe he was also nominated for the NHL All-Star Game, however, I'm not sure, but I, I think he really was, uh, I think, maybe not, I don't know, <laughs> I don't remember correctly, but Fiala, 54 points, uh, Ryan Suter, the defenseman, American defenseman, one of the more experienced guys, the same as Adler on the other side, Ryan Suter, a very good year for him, uh, 48 points, 8 goals, 40 assists, so he was putting a lot of assists this season and on the third place it's Eric Stahl with 47 points, 19 goals and 28 assists. Um, so really as you can see these top players of Minnesota were not scoring that a lot of points as for example JT Miller or Elias Patterson. Uh, but you can see that Minnesota scored 218 goals which is pretty even to 224 of Vancouver. So really in on the side of Minnesota, they are rotating the squad. They are playing you know, many forwards. They are playing you know, all four lines equally. They are at least they are trying to, and really they don't have the dominant line like of course Fiala, Eric Stahl. They are very good in one line. Zach Parisi, but really even Greenwood along with uh, Luke Kunin, and uh, you could add that also the German Nico Sturm 
he was playing in very well in the AHL this season. So really, they have not that dominant line. The bow, basically all the forwards are pretty equally uh, sent on the ice. They have pretty equal uh, minutes per game, which we'll get to it later. But really, Minnesota is that team, I would say, team-oriented group. This really does everything for team. There are not big individuals here, really, that would stand out of the crowd. Uh, and yeah, they are they are working together. They're trying to get there as a team. They have a team mentality. And uh, yeah, we'll see how they will do against Vancouver. When we look at goalie side, the top, according to save percentages, Capo, Kakun and the young Finnish guy with 91.3%. Safe percentage, but of course, Kakonen has not played that lot of games, uh, so we don't have really that um, that safe uh, amount of saves or uh, basically amount of minutes to compare him with the other guys. So Capo Kakonen is at the top, however, as I have said, he has not played that lot of minutes as the other two guys. Number second. Uh, Alex Stalock, 91%, and number three, Devan Dubnik with 89%. Really, it was a bad year for Devan Dubnik, to be honest with you. It, it was very tough for him. Also, we all know his family problems during this season with his wife being sick. It was reported many times. So, really, Dubnik, I hope for him all the best. I hope he will be able to, to continue his, his splendid career and continue putting up better numbers than he was during this regular season. And I think he's still capable of it, definitely. Okay, when we look at time on ice, uh, Ryan Suter, to no one's surprise, is the leader with 24 minutes and 38 seconds. Ryan Suter is not the youngest of the guys. He's, he is belonging to that category of a little bit older players, to be honest. And he is still putting on 24 minutes and 38 seconds per game. They are just uh, absolutely special numbers for him. 48 points this season as a defenseman, as a defensive-minded defenseman. Also, not an offensive-minded. He is not an offensive-minded defenseman, but still he was able to put 48 points. He was able to put 24 minutes, over 24 minutes, almost 25 minutes per game. It still shows you how important Ryan Suter is for Minnesota how important he is and they really need him to be healthy and to be ready to play this series and to be able to play each game this amount of minutes at least. Brian Spurgeon, the second one, 22 minutes, 34 seconds. Then comes Matt Damba and then Jonas Brodin. So the top four are uh, minutes time per on ice average of defensemen and only then comes with something over 17 minutes I do believe Zach Parisi. So even this shows you how evenly uh, spread are the minutes between all the four words, right? So uh, there is no dominant line, as I have said in Minnesota, and all the four words, at least the coaches, um, Bruce Boudreau, or right now the new coach, I believe it's Callan Edison. They're trying to spread those minutes to all forwards equally and it will be very important in playoffs as well. Okay, special teams for Minnesota. Power play actually pretty good. 21.3%, 10th in the league. Penalty kill, not that much. 77.2%, 25th in the league. So they need to improve the penalty kill because Vancouver has a very good power play. So really, that would be, I think, one of the deciding moments of the series if Minnesota would be able to shut that power play of Vancouver down. They really need to do that. They really need to concentrate on this penalty kill and improve it um, when the series will be starting. Okay, goals for Minnesota scored, as I have said already, 218 goals. That's uh, only six goals less than Vancouver and goals against is 217 goals. That's three le three more than Vancouver, a goal differential of plus one for Minnesota. So pretty much even for Minnesota goal differential. Okay, so my tip, uh, I, get a, I have got my marker here. So my tip here, I think it would be very tight series. I'm predicting a five game series. I think it would be very, very tight. I am personally, to be honest with you, a fan of Minnesota for a quite a long time. Uh, so even though I'm in Slovakia here, I, I still watch NHL quite closely and I have been a fan of Minnesota since I have watched the NHL pretty much. 
and that's why I will be a little bit basically cheering for Minnesota, but I like Vancouver as well, so um, I wouldn't be angry if Vancouver would progress uh, either. Okay, so uh, it's very hard for me to predict but I do think that Vancouver is, has a little bit better team if Mark Strom would be able to play as he was playing in the regular season. If Elias Patterson, J.D. Miller, or Horvath would be able to produce, to play their game. If, if Quinn Hughes would be playing very well in power play, if that power play will be clicking, they will be scoring a lot of goals from power play, I think Vancouver have, will have a little bit of an upper hand in this series. So I'm predicting a 3-2 win for Vancouver, and I think that Vancouver will eventually advance. However, I will be cheering for Minnesota. Okay guys, thank you very much for watching this another playing round series preview. We have still two left to go, so we'll have to do the um, from the Eastern Conference Toronto against Columbus. I will be doing maybe even tomorrow, and then I will be doing from the Western Conference another, and that will be, I guess, uh, Winnipeg against Calgary. So make sure to check that out. Also, I have also done already five playing series previews, so if you haven't watched them, you could do so on my channel here. And thank you very guys, very much guys once again for watching. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please hit that like button and also that subscribe button. It would mean a lot to me guys and it would definitely make my, uh, make my day a, l a lot better. Thank you guys very much for watching once again and I hope you have a beautiful day. Bye guys and see you soon.